You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Dawn Course, but this time we're skipping ahead quite a bit and we're getting to Rune. This is going to be Rune's run. So what I'm going to be doing from now on is skipping right to the point where we meet that character and have our first meaningful interaction with them. So, also, guys, I'm in a lot of pain right now. Uh, I think this this is probably the video that'll be going up today. Um, I injured my back yesterday, moving two large computers. So, if you hear me grunting, or if I sound like I'm in discomfort, it, it's because I am. <laughs> yeah, uh, not beating around the bush on that one. I am in a lot of pain, so. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna... Oh, God. Okay, all right. All right, I'm good. Ah, let's do this. Okay, start alarm chan and let's go. Okay, I'm still getting used to it. Hell, I don't know if I ever will. You know, it's really funny hearing you talk about, hearing you talk like that about things completely normal to us. I had no idea Americans and Norwegians are that different. Yes, but it only makes me more glad that I'm here instead of back there. Hmm? Carvin? What about the photo you mentioned? I opened my mouth to reply, but I'm interrupted by the waiter putting plates with our meals on the table. Lake shifts his attention towards the plates, looking at them hungrily with a snout ajar, as if he hasn't seen food in a year. Whew, that's nicer than I expected. Before us are two sizable dishes, one with what looks like a root vegetable stew, and the other with some sort of salad. There is also a basket with bread and a plate with sunshine buns, each of them wrapped in paper for convenience. Ooh, I love those. Soft and fluffy, smelling of cardamom and cinnamon, they became my go-to dessert after moving to Norway. Lake is first to the salad spoon and starts putting food on his plate. When he finishes, I extend my paw to take the spoon from him, but he shakes his head and starts filling my plate with food, too. Don't bother. How much do you want? I think I can see Coach looking at us out of the corner of his eye, out of my eye. Suddenly I start feeling very self-conscious. Maybe a bit more. Thanks. Oh, that smells good. Until now, I didn't really realize how hungry I was. I grab a slice of rye bread and start eating the stew. It has a rich, earthy taste, and the turnips add a crunchy texture. It's flavored masterfully, not bland and not too strong, with a hint of thyme and smoked paprika. Ooh, that's good. I needed that. Suddenly, I hear the door to the cafeteria opening. Oh yeah, you guys are probably going to be noticing that you can't hear my computer anymore in the background. This new system is usually is mostly made of what looks like tempered glass. So it's kind of blocking out the sound. Beautiful system. I should probably post a picture of it to my, uh, uh, to YouTube. Suddenly hearing the door. Suddenly, I hear the door to the cafeteria opening. I turn in the direction and see a figure clad in dark clothes entering the room. Here's that new sprite. A black cat, I think? With their dyed hair and somewhat elegant clothing, they certainly stand out from the crowd. They look in our direction for a moment, but instead of joining us to sit down at the table next to ours, where me... One second. They look in our direction for a moment, but instead of joining us, sit down at the table next to ours, where Miko is sitting. After him, another person enters the room. Bat boy! Da -na 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 -na. A bat, rather short, wearing a poncho and a scarf. A rather unusual look, but somehow it works on them. I don't think I've seen anyone wearing a poncho in Norway yet. But now that I think of it, they should work very well here in this climate. They look around the cafeteria, searching for something, or someone. They finally see us and start walking in our direction. Jorgen, come over here, we're already eating, we're already eating. Huh, so that's the roommate he was talking about. He seems like an artsy type, not someone who I normally would associate with Lake. Jorgen joins us in silence, sitting down and pouring him some, himself some juice from a pitcher. Try some stew! It's really good. Wait, I'll just put some on your plate, too. Lake does as he says, while Jorgen is sipping on his juice. What a weird pair. Two complete opposites. An extroverted volcano of energy and a stoic introvert. Finished everything you had to? I wouldn't be here otherwise, would I? to be silent. I won't bother with introducing myself to someone who did nothing to acknowledge my existence. I start stuffing myself with the stew and tune into the other conversation happening at our table. 
So right here. A traditional lunch in Norway is much more, much more modest, but it's nice to have something like this from time to time. What do you normally eat for lunch then? Usually we just have two or three open sandwiches with hummus or something else, but it's always plain. I don't know Rune and he doesn't know me, but if I ever want to talk, if I ever want to even talk with him, this is the best chance I have. On the other paw, I was already discussing something with Lake. I hope he won't mind. Talk with Rune. Get that buck, boy. Um, sorry, uh, why did you make a tradition out of eating something plain? Rune turns towards me, looking somewhat surprised by the sudden intrusion into the conversation. It's fast and convenient. Eating lunch at work for us is almost mechanical. It's not something you look forward to. It's an occasion for a quick break and some sustenance for the afternoon before coming back home. We call it mitpak, which simply means packed lunch. So, I take it that you're not from around here. I don't think we've met yet. No, I'm Carvin, a freshman here. I moved here from Finland to study cognitive science. I glance at Coach. He acknowledges my presence, nodding, and I mutter a quiet, awkward, Hello, Professor. A pleasure to meet you. I'm Rune, and I study neuroscience. His smile is confident and seems genuine. Like he really is happy to meet me, not just saying it out of courtesy. I haven't heard him talk before today. I always imagined him having a husky voice, but it's actually rather smooth, deep, and resonant. I wonder if he's used to giving orders. He'd be good at it, with that voice. I can't remember what voice he had in my dream. Maybe my own. It's weird that I've done stuff with him before he even knew me. Even if it wasn't a dream. I would like to take a better look at him, but his gaze is piercing right through me. Besides, his lively eyes are mesmerizing. I can just sit and stare at them instead and still be happy. Hmm, <clears throat> and how do you like it here? No, it's not that different. Norway's beautiful, of course, with all the mountains and fjords, but our way of living is fairly similar. Our languages have nothing in common, though. It will take me much more than these four months I've been living here to be able to hold a conversation in Norwegian. The fact that we can't even agree on one national standard doesn't make it any easier, I imagine. That was confusing at first, yeah, to, to learn that you don't speak just one language. Back in Finland, I was living in a small town, and here I am living in a big city. That makes a big difference. I had trouble sleeping for the first few nights. It's much brighter and louder at night than it was back home. And of course, I miss having a sauna in the building where I live. Wait, you had a sauna in the same building? Yeah, that's pretty standard in Finland. Most people have a sauna in the same building they live in, be it a house or an apartment building. Oh, wow. I like saunas. That is pretty crazy. Nah, what is crazy is that I have to take a bus to go to a sauna. Well, it would be pretty convenient to have one within walking distance. A nice relaxing sauna after a workout would be great. I know that there is one here, so if you want to hit the sauna with me, just say so. He winks at me. I laugh nervously, blushing. I think my heart just skipped a beat. Meanwhile, Coach finished eating and stood up, grunting to get, everyone out to get everyone's attention. Attention everyone! I have a few important, important things to say. The cafeteria goes silent in an instant. Everyone turns in Coach's direction, who is standing next to his seat. Welcome to the first day of our winter science camp. Ahead of us is a week full of activities, lectures, and practical classes, and some leisure time as well. For now, we'll let you rest. After lunch, you're free to do whatever you please. Today is for integration and fun. <clears throat> Save it right here. Devin takes a note out of his pocket and starts reading from it. Dinner is it? Dinner is at six? Is at sixteen o'clock? Say sixteen o'clock. Yeah, if someone, how do you pronounce it? Sixteen o'clock? Sixteen hundred? It's not military time, so it's not can't be sixteen hundred. Sixteen o'clock, I guess. Yeah, they're going by the twenty-four hour clock, I guess. So, dinner is at sixteen o'clock here in the cafeteria. Oh, what that? This evening, if the weather allows, those who signed up for it will be observing stars from the terrace. All the guest house's facilities are at your disposal. This includes a swimming pool, a sauna, and a common space with a snooker table. Ah, yes. Rin was right then. A small win for me. Please remember that tomorrow we're meeting at the entrance at, at 8.30 for a trip to the town. Don't be late. Breakfast is served at 7 o'clock. 
Devin folds the paper back and hides it in his pocket, looking around the room at all of the students. You're all adults, so you're free to leave the guest house. Just please, don't do anything stupid. It will be us teachers who would have to handle that. If you need anything, you can find me in room number two. In case there's an emergency, I'm your first person to contact. I see that most of you have finished already. That's all for now. You're free to go. Coach sits down again, turning towards Rune. I'm gonna hit the pool soon, but I need some rest first after that lunch. Okay, sure. I'll join you there in a while. Hmm. Just, uh, what is it between those two? Leaving the speculations for later, I get up, having finished my food. Okay, Lake. See you in a while. Sure. Take care. <laughs> Be seeing you, Calvin. I smile at him and nod. Be seeing you, Rune. I grab a sunshine bun from the plate and take a bite, holding it through the paper. It's so good. I let out a pleasured sigh. Giving like a pat on the shoulder, I start walking out of the cafeteria towards my room. I bump into a few students on my way out of the cafeteria, but thankfully the bun didn't take any damage. Coming back to my room, I catch myself humming a melody. I haven't been in such a good mood in a long while, and I've got every reason to be. The air here is clean and pleasant, even inside the guest house. I have nothing to worry about. No classes, no assignments, no groceries or cleaning to be done. It's so peaceful here. And I feel this strange energy building up inside me, excitement for the coming time that threatens to explode. I'm free. I have nowhere to hurry, and at the same time, there's so much I want to do. I have this whole camp ahead of me. I already can't wait to walk around the forest here and hop into the sauna afterwards. Rune's words echo in my head. If you'd want to hit the sauna with me, just say so. Was it actually an offer, or was he just joking? Because I definitely would take up on it. I conjure up the image of him sitting on a sauna bench, with only a towel around his waist, sweat dripping from his muscular body. No, 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 I got a time to be thinking about things like that. Um, Carbon? I yelp, startled. I got completely lost in my thoughts, and I did not hear the f I did not hear the footsteps behind me. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I saw you standing here and daydreaming. What's up? N nothing. Just thinking about how great it is to be here now. Miko's face brightens up with a smile. Mm-hmm. It's good to change the scenery from time to time. I'm glad you're happy, and it's good to spend some time with you again. Out of nowhere, I once again find myself in the wolf's tight embrace. I wrap my arms around him, reciprocating the hug and snuggling him closely. Although, that's probably not what we should be doing in a corridor. I hope nobody will walk on us now. A few years ago, I wouldn't even mind, but now for some reason I feel a bit self-conscious. Patting him on the back, I break the hug. Let me say it right here, guys. I'm really looking forward to the trip to the town. It's been such a long time since we've been on anything like this. Yeah, that should be fun. I hope to get some nice shots there, too. Anyway, I'd better get go. I better be going. I want to rest some after that lunch. Okay, I'll be in my room then in any case. You know where to look for me. Feel free to drop by. I nod and turn around, continuing to my room. Finally, standing before the door to my room, I put a paw in my pocket to take out the key. But it's not there. I wiggle my paw inside the pocket, but it's empty. I check the other pocket. My only my phone is there, and of course I wouldn't put the keys in the same pocket as my phone anyway. I feel the cold sweat on my forehead. No. No. Things like that don't really happen. There's literally no way I could lose that key. I always put my keys in my right pocket, and I wear trousers with deep enough pockets that nothing falls out. I press the handle and try to open the door, but it doesn't budge. I knew I'd locked it anyway. Okay, deep breaths. The key must have simply fallen out of my pocket somewhere along the way. Maybe in the cafeteria. I simply have to retrace my steps and look for it. But in the back of my head, I know that it's not what happened. I turn back around and walk down the stairs, scanning the carpet for any unexpected shapes. Some students pass me along the way, and I try my best not to look distressed. I don't want to buy. I want. The, I don't want the others to look at me as if I'm some clumsy kid. But foremost, I'm scared of the possible fines for losing a key. I'm just a student without any job. I can't really afford even. I can't really afford putting even more strain on my budget. Better than not even consider it. I feel like I'm already on the verge of a panic attack. 
I might have wanted some adventures during this camp, but this is definitely not what I had in mind. Why are you staring at the ground? I almost jumped back, startled. Why is everyone so set on scaring me today? Rune is standing in front of me and looking at me with concern, clutching a key in his right paw. Rune! I didn't hear your steps. I was just daydreaming. You looked like you were looking for something, though. He tilts his head slightly and observes me closely with full seriousness. This is really embarrassing. Well, what are you holding there? This? This is the key to my room. Oh. So you did lose something. I look away, embarrassed. Of all the people that could stumble upon me in this corridor, it had to be him. He doesn't seem to want to mock me, though. Actually, he seems genuinely concerned. He's really perceptive, that's for sure. Now that I'm getting to know him, I have to say that he's different than I imagined. Well, yeah, cannot find the key to my room. It must have fallen out of my pocket when I was coming back from lunch. I don't know how that could happen, but I don't say that out loud. I just feel bad about this in general. Oh, well, that's bad. He scratches his head, ruffling his auburn hair. You should check out the you should check out the reception. Maybe find some maybe someone found it and returned it there. And you could always go to Devon. He should know what to do. We're supposed to go to a teacher in case of any emergency, and I would call this one. Find the key. I'll try to find the key. For now, I prefer to look for it myself. I don't really look forward to having to pay for a lost key. Rune nods with a serious face. Okay, then. I'll help you look for it if you want to. I exhale, deflating as most of the tension leaves my body, as if a heavy stone was lifted from my shoulders. Instead, I can feel my cheeks getting hot. That's Rune offering me, the, me his help, after all. Did you go anywhere other than your room after lunch? Nope, straight to my room. It could be, it could be somewhere on the way to the cafeteria. Let's save it. Let's go there. You've probably dropped your key somewhere there, and now you're worrying about nothing. Rune shoves the key into his pocket and starts walking alongside me. <laughs> the silence between us starts to feel a bit uncomfortable. Rune must have sensed that as well, because he is the first one to break it. So, Garvin, you moved here from Finland, yes? Why? I don't really want to go into details right now, so I just recite the same answer I tell everyone. I would really like to know why he left. I'm considering that, considering how cold he seems to his mother, I'm wondering if he basically, I guess, came out to her and she didn't accept him and they had like a falling out. You know, just a, just a fan theory of mine. <clears throat> anyway, I wanted to study cognitive science and I looked for the universities with the best opinions. It was just a coincidence that the best one I could still that I could still get into was in Norway. I look at Rune and see that he's looking back at me, expecting me to continue. But I'm happy with how th with how things went, and I much prefer living in a dormitory than staying with my parents. Oh yes, dormitories are nothing fancy, but they sure are fun. I've lived in a dormitory during my first two years in the university, and frankly, I regret moving out. Why did you do it then? I wanted to have a room of my own. You know, roommates often get in the way of stuff. He winks at me again. The imagination starts running wild about what kind of stuff he might mean. So, you, uh, you have your own flat now? Yes, I'm, uh, living alone. I'm renting a flat just next to the shore. It's nothing special, but boy, you should see the views I have from there. I love living there so much. That doesn't mean I don't love living- I didn't love living in the dormitory, though, just for very different reasons. Meanwhile, we arrive at the door to the cafeteria. Rune opens the door and Hal holds it for me, gesturing for me to come inside. Just minutes ago, the cafeteria was bustling with students, but now it's eerily silent. Tables are still covered with checkered tablecloths, gleaming in the sunlight filtered through the windows. Looks like the sun came out from behind the clouds for a moment. Even though it's only a while after noon, it's already, it already is low on the horizon. We're above the Arctic Circle, after all. The eeriness of the empty cafeteria and the Arctic sun makes it all seem like a scene from a film. Especially with Rune entering the room and looking around slowly, the warm light highlighting his silhouette. The sudden sound of the door closing after us echoes into the room, startling me. For a moment, I forgot why we were even here. I snap out of my daze and start to look around instead, but to no avail. This is the table where we were eating, but I don't see the key. Are you sure you even had it with you when we were here? 
I'm not sure of anything now. I think so, but I didn't check. Still, I don't know where else I could lose it. Rune walks up to the window, taking a look outside before turning again to me. I think that going to the reception desk is the only option you have. I say nothing, but I know that he's right. I walk up to the window next to him and lean on the window sill. The sun already hit behind the clouds again, and the snowfall still continues. I look sideways and see Rune looking through the window at some point in the distance. He must have noticed me looking, though, because he turns towards me. What's up? Thank you. Just thinking about how nice of it, how nice of it, how nice it was of you to help me. The snow forms white caps on trees and covers everything in sight. If I open the window, cold Arctic wind could, cold Arctic wind would bring some inside too. I could extend my arms and watch how the snowflakes melt in my fur, or get stuck between my whiskers. Thank you for coming here with me. It was really starting to panic when I noticed I've lost the key. No problem at all. I like helping others. Help. At least the ones I like. Yeah, perfect place to end an alarm, Chan. You saucy gal. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.